we're on the bow of the boat and we're going to set our units up okay we've done some things hopefully you guys watched the console setup if you did you're going to notice i run the same screen on the front fishing as i do on the left of my console mapping 2d And the reason I do this is because these two units, these two live scope units, are going to give me everything else that I want. The only other thing that I have here is a short key that gives me depth in the back. Like if I'm smallmouth fishing, smallmouth have a tendency to fall you underneath your yep. engine. I can see them there. It's sourced to my unit in the back. That's the only difference in the settings in this unit and the console on the left. Okay, first time ever, I'm gonna run two live scope transducers. What this, the reason I'm doing this, you guys are gonna ask, is because I can hunt with two, but also when I'm an anchor lock, I can use an independent live scope transducer to sit there and hunt. You know, the independent is not attached to the shaft, so I can, you know, hunt them down while I'm an anchor lock. So. The big question is settings. Everybody wants to know what are the special settings that we that we use. So let's just go through that. On this screen, we're going to see pan optics. Now most people are going to have one live scope icon on here. Now remember when we went through and we named them. So we've got the live scope turret, live scope trolling motor. So this guy is the one on the trolling motor. This is what everyone's going to see right here. We're just by default, we can see things are in auto. One of the first things I tell people, get it out of auto. Okay. So the way we do that is we can come in here and select it. One thing I'll, I'll mention real quick is if I just touch the auto button, it will take them out of auto right there. But typically we come in here and we can change our changing settings right here. Again, we will always want that, that number. You know, I'm, I'm gonna start in that 65% range. That's a pretty good range to start. Again, we're always adjusting. So that's our gain for that. My depth range, I personally like to keep it, we're in some shallow water right here, but I like to add about two feet, give or take, of below. So I can see what's coming up. If I'm looking out there and I see a ditch coming, it doesn't just automatically appear underneath it. Uh, now, if I'm ranging way out there, I like a little bit more, again, trying to follow those contours. Yeah. What happens is you have an auto and even say you're fishing a flat and you pan out over 30 foot of water, your screen is adjusting the whole time for that depth. And what happens is you may have a fish right then and your screen's- you know, That's exactly correct. So I'm the same way, I like to run it in manual. I usually, my preference is I'll keep it eight or 10 feet over okay. in case I, you know, I'm, I'm here or there. Yep. But it's personal preference. Just that, like it is that, that's exactly, and there's, there's different times when I will absolutely change that to a different setting and it's application based. Um, and then the other thing is forward range. You know, if I'm out hunting, I like to stay out here in the 70 foot. You know, I'm looking for those those anomalies out there. I'm looking for structure, I'm looking for a fish, but I like to keep it out there um, from that standpoint. Again, that's one of those personal things. Now, if I set up on a brush pile, and let's say that I move in and I'm gonna make a cast of 40 feet, mm -hmm. I'm gonna range that as tight as I can because it, it really shows better detail at that level. Right. So now we've got just our basic settings of our, our depth, our gain, and our range. So then I'm gonna come in here to sonar setup and I'm gonna go into appearance. Just like in our, our clear view and side view, I've got my color scheme. Amber is probably the most popular. I've really liked this lava. I've kind of become uh, accustomed to it, but by far um, Amber is my, is my go-to. My favorite. Yeah, that's your favorite, yeah, there you favorite. go. And I, and I think that's probably pretty, pretty good from that standpoint as well. Again, it's, it's one of those things that everyone needs to. Now, color gain, remember we talked about contrast on our side view and clear view? Color gain would be kind of that same, same mantra there. I run my color gain way up here hot. You can see how much brighter this got. When those fish get locked on the bottom, it exposes them a little bit better. You'll see those knuckles a little bit better. And it will magnify, I've learned this, it magnifies your crappie jig at 75 feet. That's exactly right. You might lose a little bit of definition, but I'm okay with that because I'm, I'm trying to find that target. And like you said, that crappie jig that's way out there. So that's, that's one of those settings as well. Um, and then the trails, you know, that's a cool setting. Basically what happens with trails, if we turn this on, 
if there was something moving along here, it, we could actually see the trail. Yeah, you can just see the bottom as it moves away. Exactly. And what that's doing is that tells you how fast that object is moving and what direction it's moving. Now, something of note is slow means the trail is going to disappear slow. Yeah. We, so if I run trails, I'm going to run on fast. I don't use that a whole lot and unless I'm chasing those open water fish, sometimes I'll use that. Uh, but it is a cool feature. So let's go and turn that off. And then the bottom field, this is a, this is a feature that's actually pretty good. So what it will do is when it gets locked on the bottom, we're in a really soft bottom. We can see it here, but it's having a hard time, but it will actually fill in and let me know where that hard bottom is at. So I know kind of what my, my feedback is from that standpoint. I do run that off most of the time. So the next one we get is this TVG. TVG is time variable gain. So imagine that you are um, in some, some choppy water. When I come up, when the boat comes up, I don't want to shoot my, the, the full signal out at that point because I'm actually going to leave between the waves. I'm going to go through, right? And, mm -hmm. and then I lose some of that signal in the air. Well, time variable gain basically times it up so when I'm, the transducer is buried in the water, that's when I give the, the most signal out. Well, and what you'll see is on low, if we turn this on high, we'll start seeing this black area come out here. Mm -hmm. I typically run this off unless I'm fishing out there really deep. You can see that, that area right there just kind of disappears. Yeah. But again, that's one of those that I typically run you know, low. Then we get this ghost reject. We, we've, we all know, we've heard of it, we talk about the ghost tree, it's that artifact. The ghost tree is just the nature of the sonar itself. It's the way the frequencies come down and hit. You'll always notice that if we're in four foot of water, we would have the ghost tree would appear about four feet. So if we were in 10 foot, it would appear about 10 foot out. And it's a signal coming down and then coming back on itself. Garmin recognized it and, and has basically gone and uh, made these settings right here. Created a filter. Created a filter, exactly. Yeah. And so it softens it up. It can't eliminate it because it's just the nature of the sonar, um, but they've created a filter to do that. So I, this is one that I play with. Some days it's worse than others, um, but I typically start with it off and just learn to fish around it. Um, now noise reject, I typically run mine on high. You can see how that cleaned it up a little bit. Now the only issue with that is because I'm filtering that data, it is now gonna make things appear a little bit slower. This is the raw data that we're seeing. Yeah. My brain can process it if I want. Yes, there's gonna be more clutter, but I don't always want this deciding what to show me and what not. So, um, but usually on high, a big fish is gonna return well anyway, so, th so that's okay. So, I don't care about device voltage. I don't care about depth. I don't care about any of that. So we got this yeah, nice, right we've got it all right there. We've got it so many other places. This is where the money's made, right? I mean, this is one of the big money makers. So I want to keep this clean. The other thing I'll mention is this layout feature. So what this does, I do not fish with the grid. Personally, I don't. That's a personal preference. Do you do you fish with the grid? I used to, but now it's just like a process. And, you know, it, I kind of you, you know I can glance at the numbers and it just gives me more of that screen. It, it, exactly, and that that's the whole deal for me. Scroll history, we don't really care about the on-screen control. These numbers down here, we can turn that off. We can turn it on, so you can make quick adjustments. And then this reverse range. So this is where my transducer is. I can actually hide that. So this is the transducer looking straight down below the boat and you know in this situation i can only look forward i can change it to minimum this is the old style and then there's a full and what this does is if you're out there in deeper water you're talking about the smallmouth hiding behind the you could actually have this where it would shoot you know depending on depth far enough behind you you may want to see what's back there without having to spin the transducer around right. so by you know, normally I just start with default and I change it per application. But uh, besides that, that's that's pretty much it. I think the million dollar question, just like on the console, is everybody wants to know an exact number. Yep. As far as depth, you usually keep it, you know, two to five, six, ten foot deeper than yep. what you're fishing. Gain and you you know your forward view. It's all based on if you're hunting or if you actually found your target and you're trying to catch yep. it. 
Gain is something you have to play with based yep. on uh, just the water, the bottom, yep. I mean, the bottom composition and things like that. So these two are pretty easy. The gain you have to play with. The easiest way I tell people is I, is I get it hot, if I can touch the right button. I get it hot, that way I know I'm seeing everything, and then I start backing it down until I, I still want just a little bit of this stuff to know that I'm seeing everything. Yep. Right there would be where I would fish with it. And th that's exactly right. And, and if you want a number to start with, you know, for me, and you, you almost hit it right on, 65% and then that color gain, 85%. Start with those two numbers and then adjust from there. So pretty much right on. We're gonna close that out. That's how, I mean, I'm ready to go. This unit will set up just like that. We're good to go fishing. Thanks for following along. Thanks for riding along. Thank you. Absolutely.